Happy New Year! It's 2017. This is actually my first tech tip. Now, let me make this straight. This is the first new tech tip I've made this year. Uh, the new series, Season 5 or Series 5, has already started. There was a tech tip out the last couple of days, a new one, and then this one we're doing today. You folks will be watching this sometime in February. Anyway, Happy New Year. Alec Pierce from Alec Pierce Scuba, and I'm back here at the Scuba 2000 Service Center to share with you some more information. Uh, and th th this particular tech tip is a direct response to somebody's inquiry. So keep those comments and inquiries coming. I think it's fantastic. I want to take just a moment, however, and explain to you when I said I'm back here at the Scuba 2000 Service Center. I don't work here anymore. Ah, I'm retired. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Kev. 47 years in the scuba diving business. That's right. I started in 1969 as a dive clerk and instructor at a scuba dive store working part-time. And uh, I've had, I don't know, a dozen dive stores and helped to open maybe 20 dive stores. Had the biggest chain of dive stores in Canada, seven, seven stores in Ontario. And Scuba 2000 and the wet shop in Scuba 2000 became the biggest dive store ever in Canada. And uh, is still doing really, really well. However, uh, several months ago, uh, we actually sold Scuba 2000 to a very energetic, enthusiastic, and technically expert uh, people, group of people, to run Scuba 2000. So Scuba 2000 continues, but uh, the only time I'll ever be here is when I'm doing tech tips for you folks out there. Uh, just because I sold Scuba 2000 doesn't mean I, all, all that info has gone from my head. So I'm going to keep sharing that as long as you keep asking for ideas and tech tips, and I get the feeling that I'm being helpful, even if it's only one diver out of the thousands that watch that gets a good idea and it helps make his diving more fun, a little easier, maybe a little safer, and I'll keep doing these tech tips for you. Keep the comments and ideas coming in. Today we're going to talk about dust caps. Dust caps, they're little black rubber things, you know what they are. Everybody diver knows what a dust cap is. Uh, right off the bat, you know, I have to say to myself, why is it called a dust cap? There's no dust underwater. Well, that's the name it's always been. It should be called a water cap, right? Uh, or a dry cap. Anyway, they call it a dust cap. And every regular has had dust caps, even going back to the 50s, my very first regulator. Two hose regulator, a Mistral, Aquamaster Mistral with uh, yellow hoses at a dust cap. And my very first uh, uh, single hose regulator, which was again a US diver's Aquamatic, had a dust cap. And uh, they've all, they all have dust caps. And as you probably already know, if you're a diver at all, you know the dust caps are designed to keep water, in fact, anything, water or dirt, anything, out of the, the very critical first stage. As it is very, very important to keep dust and water out of there, uh, in particular water. A single drop of seawater can wreak havoc on the inside of your first stage. We see it all the time here at the service center. A regulator comes in and it's beautiful, it's quite new, it's chrome and shiny and clean and everything else. We take off the uh, the dust cap, the filter's a little bit green, and I'm starting to say, oh no, I take it apart, and sure enough, salt water has got inside the regulator. And all those parts in there, and there are some stainless steel, they rust, there's a lot of brass, it turns green, there's chrome, the chrome peels off. All those parts are destroyed by salt water. So a dust cap is critical if you want your big investment in the, in the regulator to last. And of course, you want to keep it working properly so that you last as well. So we're going to talk about dust caps. And as I say, this is a direct result of somebody asking about dust caps. Now, to be honest, the inquiry or the question was about dust caps for DIN regulators, which I'll get to in one minute. But there is some important information about dust caps for yoke style regulators. The most common type of regulator, certainly in the Western Hemisphere, the most common regulator for recreational divers to use, the uh, good old yoke type regulator. Now most yoke type regulators, and we're talking about a regulator like this with a first stage like this, come with a dust cap. They all come with a dust cap. So this is a big brand name. It doesn't matter what brand it is. I'm not going to tell you what brand it is, but I have three big brand name regulators. I'm going to show you the, 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 the dust cap. So you undo the knob a little bit as you know, you pull out the dust cap. Now, I want you to get nice and close here, Kev. I'm going to hold this perfectly still. And you take a look inside that dust cap. Can you get right in there? Can you see that that dust cap has got a, a, a big hole in there, a big container in there? It actually, it, it's, it, it's not a solid uh, surface on it. There's a container. Let's take another one. Here's a, another really big brand name. Uh, very, very popular, very common, regular. Take a look at this one. You see inside there? Again. It's got a little, it's almost like a cup in there. It looks to me as if it would hold quite a bit. In fact, I'm going to try. For the first time, I'm going to actually try and see if I can figure out how much these, because these are just crazy, these, these new designs that they have on these new rigs. Here's another one, another big brand regulator. The brand doesn't matter, but look at here. Can you see the hole in there, Kevin? There's a big hole in there. Look, I thought what I would do just for a laugh is I would take one of those dust caps. And I have one laying sitting here, right here somewhere. Or somewhere it went somewhere, where did they go? 
I had uh, right, uh, okay. There it is right here. Good, good, good. So here's one of those dust caps off of that last regulator. You can see the big hole in there. Well, watch this. I'm going to dip it into this water. I have a, a cup full of water here, a glass of water. It's not completely full. Uh, the dust cap's not quite full to the surface. And then I'm going to dump that carefully into this teaspoon. Can you see that, Kevin? Can you see that this dust cap that is supposed to seal the first stage, can you see, can you see that, Kevin? Can you see that that dust cap holds a teaspoonful? And it wasn't quite full. It holds more than a teaspoonful of water. I mean, how stupid is that? But that's the current design. So how do we, how do we solve the problem? Well, a couple of things. First of all, let me quickly, if I may, with you, review. And please, please, if, even if you're a very experienced diver, please don't turn off the video just because I'm going to show you how to take a regulator off of a tank after it's been used. But I'm, I'm going to do it. So you take the dust cap off, you put the regulator on, and you turn the air on, psh, psh, off you go, and you go diving, right? And you come back afterwards. What do you do? You're going to take the regulator off and put it onto your second tank for your second dive, right? What do you do? Well, I see all kinds of things. I see people, they take the regulator off. Okay, you've seen this, I'm sure you have. And they take the dust cap, because they know they're supposed to dry the dust cap, because it's been in the water, right? And so I see this all the time. And, and they blow it out with air from the tank. It sounds really impressive, doesn't it? Where did the water go? Right, all over the boat, including inside the regular, right there. That little filter in there has to stay, stay shiny and bright. Not a single drop of seawater must get in there. Where did all the water go? A teaspoonful of water just flew all over the boat. Now you not only got water inside your regulator, which is not good, but you probably had no idea the other divers in the boat too. So I do not suggest you do that. Here's what I suggest you do. Years of experience and many, many, many years servicing. Right. Here's what I suggest you do. First of all, make sure your thumb is nice and clean and dry. Now, you've purged the regulator. Take the regulator off the tank and immediately put your thumb over the hole. You see? You see? My thumb over the hole. Okay? No water's getting in there. Now take the dust cap and blow into it with your mouth. That's important because it doesn't go all over the place. Your thumb is over the hole. Secondly, in order to blow over into the hole, you have to look at it. So you can see if there's any water or dirt in there. Blow on it when it's nice and clean and dry, then slip it in place to replace your thumb. Do the knob back up, not too tightly, just snugly, and you're done. No salt water, no sand, no dirt. Have an annoyed anybody on the boat? Done quickly and easily, just like that. Just a different way of doing it. In my opinion, a better way of doing it. Keep the salt water out of the regulator. Very important. Now, what else can you do? I've suggested that these dust caps are not very good because they have a great big hole in them. The old original dust cap, <clears throat> the same dust cap that was on my Mistral back in the late 50s and on my Aquamatic in the late 60s, look just like this. They haven't changed a bit. You can still buy them. A piece of hard plastic, a little dimple up here for the, the for the the yolk screw to go into, and on the bottom side, facing the regulator, it's a flat, hard plastic surface, and there's a ring on there. I'm going to do something here. Watch this, Kev. I reach in with this, and look, there's an O-ring in there. Now, that O-ring was in there for two reasons. One was to make a good seal, because the rubber makes a better seal than the hard plastic when it's in place on the regulator to keep the water out. Secondly, it's a good spare. That's a spare O-ring for your regulator. Now, there's a minor problem, divers. It's the old style. This is the old style of dust cap, and it only takes the old fat style of O-ring. This won't fit into a modern 3,000 PSI tank. However, the idea is still good. It's a rubber surface, rubber surface, hard plastic, and flat on the bottom. Here's some more. There are others. Look at this one. You can see here. Can you see that, Kevin? And another one right beside it. I can show you both sides. You see? Hard, flat, rubber surface. No big hole in there. Now these ones are made to fit different ways. This one goes around the body of the regulator and goes into the into the hole. This one fits under the thumb screw and goes into into to cover the filter. Here's another one. I love this one. This was a really good one. I had that one one manufacturer made these for years. Only one company still has these. I love these. You're, it, this goes onto the yoke screw. But look at this. It's just a hard rubber ball. No better seal. The rubber ball is nice and clean. You put it in place, put the knob down on it, crimp it in there, and you're going to get no salt water, no sand or dirt in there. So there's two things that you can do. First of all, change the dust cap. 
not a problem, get a better dust cap. One of our, uh, one of our divers made the suggestion that what he did, he took his dust cap, which had a big hole, and filled it with silicone sealant and let it harden, let it dry. Now silicone sealant stays a bit spongy, a little bit soft, and it filled it right up nice and tightly. He puts it in and screws it down. Come, good, great idea if you don't want to change it. Or go to your local dive store, get a better dust cap, change it. And the second thing you can do, as I just showed you with the regulator, when you take it off, be very careful the way that you clean that dust cap. Don't be blowing stuff all over. Keep your hand over the filter, your thumb over the filter, clean it, put it back in and seal it up. I'm telling you this because if, I, if you do these things, you'll never come and see me or your local dive store for service. It simply makes your regulator uh, last a lot longer. The filter goes bad, everything goes bad in there with any salt water. We see it all the time. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to scoot on here. As I mentioned, uh, the, the actual comment from the, the, the reader, uh, the, the watcher, was about DIN regulators, because DIN regulators and, and uh, DIN valves are a lot different than yoke type. I better take one second on that. This is a yoke type regulator, and I just showed you, you put a yoke on it, and you're all familiar with this, uh, a yoke type, and it has an O-ring in there. I think you can see that, Kevin, that O-ring in there. Now watch, I'm going to take this Allen key and put it in there and take that out of there, and this is kind of interesting. With this particular valve, which is the only type of valve we use at Scuba 2000, you take the center out, and now we have a DIN valve. Ah, so this particular valve is it's called a converter valve. It, it comes with set up for a yoke regulator, but if for whatever reason, because you're doing uh, diving with high pressure tanks or different type of diving or diving in Europe, you can actually use a DIN regulator on it just by taking out that insert. Pretty neat, huh? It works the other way too, by the way. If you have a DIN valve on your tank and you want to use a yoke type regulator, you can simply pick up one of these inserts and screw it in. And now you can put your yoke regulator onto the DIN valve. So that's what a DIN valve looks like. And what goes into there? Obviously, it doesn't have a yoke or a yoke screw. No, it doesn't. This is a DIN regulator first stage. So you can see that this first stage has a, a knob that spins, and it has threads on it, and it has an O-ring on the back. So it's really very simple. I mean, I'm sure it comes with instructions, but you don't need them. You insert that in there, and you just tighten up the threads with the uh, with that big knurled nut. And your DIN regulator is now mounted into the DIN valve. One of the differences, one of the obvious and practical differences is that the O-ring is not in the valve anymore. Now it's on the regulator. One of our watchers the other day said that that's a good idea because now it's the diver's responsibility to make sure that the O-ring is in good shape. And it's more likely to stay in good shape because it's not exposed to salt water and sun and so on as rental regulators are down south. However, what we want to talk about right now is dust caps. Again, here we go, dust caps for DIN regulators and valves. And there are dust caps for those, there are specific ones. Now, there are some cheap slip-on soft plastic ones that I've seen. You know, sometimes they come with the valves and regulators. I, I think the first thing you should do when you get a a regulator and it has one of those cheap little soft plastic slip-on. It's like a piece of tubing is all it really is. The best thing is to take a pair of scissors and very carefully cut the string and throw it in the garbage. <laughs> because uh, I, they're, good, they're good for shipping the regulator, but they really don't do a good job. So what do you do? Well, first of all, let's deal with the regulator because that's what we've been talking about. But how do you, what, what's the dust cap look for a DIN, look like for a DIN regulator? Well, it looks just like this. There's one on here. There's one right on here. It fastens with a string, the same thing. And it goes over the end, you see, like that, and you just screw it on. You can screw the cap on, or you can screw that little nut into it. Yes, the dust cap is actually threaded. The dust cap is threaded just like this. Now, this is excellent. This is just excellent because the O-ring in the regulator, in the, in the DIN adapter, the DIN fitting on the regulator, is O-ring sealed. So it goes into this cap, and you, you can feel it at the very end. You can feel it sealing. The O-ring seals down in there. It's a really, really good seal. And matching that, now what you can do at your local doctor, you can get a DIN valve matching dust cap. Because there's no point in having the regulator nice and clean. If down in that, you see the big opening, if in that big opening there's dirt. So now you can get a dust cap for your DIN valve. O-ring seal, yeah, right there. Perfectly sealed with an O-ring. And perfectly sealed on the regulator too. So this is a, this is a much better DIN a uh, uh, regulator dust cap and DIN valve dust cap. These particular ones I've just shown you are, are made of Delrin. It's a fancy name for plastic. 
Yeah. Delrin has a capital. Plastic does not. <laughs> but anyway, they're made of plastic. You can get the same things in metal. You can get them in black metal. You can get them in different colors. Now, these are really, really nice. This is metal. It's metal. It's aluminum. And you can see it's beautifully made. And it's the very same thing. You can get it uh, matching. So this goes into the your DIN valve beautifully, just like that. <clears throat> and of course, there is a, if I can get this off of here quickly and show you, there is a matching <clears throat> regulator DIN cap as well. It looks just like this. Made of metal. See? And that goes on to your DIN regulator right down to the end. O-ring, just like that. Beautiful set. And, and if you're fussy, you can get it in blue or yellow or pink, whatever color. Made of metal, anodized aluminum. They're very, very good. And they're cheap. We're talking less than 10 bucks. They're 15 bucks for a set of these. And a $15, wow, Jesus, 15 bucks. That's like a drink and a half, uh, two beers. Um, uh, however, it saves you hundreds. Particularly, you know, if you, if you use these religiously and clean them as I've shown you earlier, make sure they're nice and clean before you put them in place. Particularly this DIN, uh, DIN cap for the regulator because this goes around with you underwater. You see, it travels with you underwater. And so it gets filled up too. You see in there, there's a big hole in there. So make certain before you put that on, if you blow that out carefully, make sure it's nice and clean before you screw it onto your regulator. Keep them out of there. Okay, just that simple, folks. Dust caps, all about dust caps. Yoke style and in style. They have them both, get a good quality one. If it's a yoke style, try to stay away from the ones with a great big hole in them or be very, very careful. Careful, and the DIN ones as well. They're a good one, made of metal, and you'll protect your investment and your gear will always work, and you won't be spending hundreds of dollars in the service department. I hope there was something in all of that that uh, piqued your, uh, your interest and might help you with your diving. Keep those questions and comments coming. I just love it. Talk to you real soon again. Alec Pierce, Alec Pierce Scuba, Tip Tips.